Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. For all real numbers x, the absolute value of cosine x is less than or equal to 1, and the absolute value of sine x is less than or equal to 1. Now first, let's remind ourselves of our definition of sine and cosine. For each complex number z, we define cosine of z to be e to the i z plus e to the negative i z over 2. And we define sine z to be e to the i z minus e to the negative i z over 2i. Now, this tells us what sine and cosine are over the domain of complex numbers. But we've also seen what sine and cosine are over the domain of real numbers, right? We've proven the following fact. For all real numbers x, the cosine of x is equal to the real part of e to the ix, and the sine of x is equal to the imaginary part of e to the ix. So geometrically, If we consider the complex plane, then maybe e to the ix is this vector. Well then, the real part of e to the ix is represented like this, and the imaginary part of e to the ix is represented like this. So we have cosine of x and sine of x. And another fact that we've proven about sine and cosine is that sine squared of z plus cosine squared of z is equal to 1. So now, let's get to proving this theorem. To start out the proof, since we're trying to prove a state about every real number, let's give ourselves an arbitrary real number called x. From here, we want to show that the absolute value of cosine x is less than or equal to 1, and absolute value of sine x is less than or equal to 1. And to show that, we're first going to show that absolute value of e to the ix is equal to 1. If we can show that absolute value of e to the ix is equal to 1, well then, geometrically, what this looks like is absolute value of cosine x is less than or equal to absolute value of e to the ix, and absolute value of sine x is less than or equal to absolute value of e to the ix. In other words, we should have that absolute value of cosine x is less than or equal to 1, and absolute value of sine x is less than or equal to 1. All right, so that's the idea. So let's first show that absolute value of e to the ix is equal to 1. Now, by definition of the absolute value of a complex number, this guy is just equal to the square root of its real part squared plus its imaginary part squared. And we know that the real part of e to the ix is equal to cosine x, and the imaginary part of e to the ix is equal to sine x. But we know that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1, so this is just square root of 1, which is equal to 1. So we have shown that absolute value of e to the ix is equal to 1. And from our discussion earlier, it should follow that these two inequalities hold. And the way we can show that is by using the following fact about complex numbers. We have, for all complex numbers z, the absolute value of the real part of z is less than or equal to the absolute value of z, and the absolute value of the imaginary part of z is less than or equal to the absolute value of z. So now, we know that cosine of x is equal to the real part of e to the ix, and by this fact, the absolute value of the real part of e to the ix is less than or equal to the absolute value of e to the ix, which we have just shown is equal to 1. And so, the absolute value of cosine x is less than or equal to 1. As for absolute value of sine x, we know that sine x is equal to the imaginary part of e to the ix. And, based on this fact, we know that absolute value of the imaginary part of e to the ix is less than or equal to the absolute value of e to the ix, which is equal to 1. So this tells us that the absolute value of sine x is less than or equal to 1. And so, we have shown that both of these inequalities are true. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.